Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever Atlantic 2024 hurricane season podcast from Gav's Weather Vid. So here we go, it's time to do something that we have never done on the channel before in all the years that I've had Gav's Weather Vids, both channel and also Gav's Weather Vids. GavsWeatherVids.com. Back in the day, I have never issued a uh, forecast for the uh, Atlantic tropical storm and or hurricane season, but that is going to change for this year, and I shall get on with our first ever forecast for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season in a moment. Just say that if you enjoy the content on the channel at the moment, you'd like, share, and subscribe, and show it to everybody for doing that for Gavs Weatherviz. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, OK, well, let's have a look, man. Now, bear in mind, this is completely new territory for uh, for me, for Gav. So, uh, just bear with me, please, everybody, and uh, we'll see how we get on. So, the first place to begin with the Atlantic Hurricane Season Forecast is, of course, with the Atlantic. So, uh, these are the sea surface temperature anomalies for, uh, for the Atlantic as of the 24th of April. So uh, you can see that we have got a very warm tropical and subtropical Atlantic Ocean, anywhere from like uh, the Azores and the Canary Islands southwards uh, in this zone with significantly above average sea surface temperature anomalies. And this is important because this is like the um, area where these storms get out. So this is the Cabo Verde Islands, for example. And that is the area where we get uh, energy coming out of Africa in the form of thunderstorms. Thunderstorms moving into the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, they pick up further energy as they run across those warm waters of the uh, subtropical Atlantic. And then, of course, they go off in that direction, gradually picking up more and more energy and uh, getting rotation, and etc., etc., etc. And that is how we get these storms going. So the starting point for this forecast is that we have got a significantly warmer than average um, uh, subtropical and also tropical Atlantic Ocean. It's not overly warm at this stage around the southeastern corner of America and into the Caribbean and also into the Gulf of Mexico. Both southern parts of the Caribbean through here are quite a bit warmer than like these northern regions. I'd say the Gulf of Mexico isn't overly warm either, but I think these areas will be heating up actually over the next uh, few weeks and months. They're, they're sh slightly shallower waters, I think, and they will be prone to uh, seeing temperature increases over the next few uh, weeks and months. So we've got a warm subtropical and tropical Atlantic Ocean, particularly in the, uh, the Genesis area uh, where these storms are born. We're expecting to see the uh, Caribbean and also the Gulf of Mexico and the uh, Atlantic here off the uh, coast of uh, Southeast America warming up as well. So the Atlantic looks pretty primed for a big season. So, based on the Atlantic, you would go at least probably for an above average season. Now, combined with that, we've got to come over here into the Pacific because we also see uh, a signal for colder than average sea surface temperature anomalies to begin to start uh, appearing through the central and eastern portion of the Equator Pacific Ocean. That looks like it could be uh, La Nina. Started about. We know that La Nina do often, not always, but do often follow El Nino events, warm events. We have had an El Nino, have had a warm event through uh, the past year, reached its peak around Christmas of 2023, for example. That is reversing, still pretty warm over here in the western portion of the Atlantic Ocean, but cooling down quite um, quite steadily, I wouldn't say quickly, but quite steadily in the eastern portion of the uh, extra Pacific Ocean. We see cold average sea surface temperature not gathering here. Not a huge amount off the coast of South America yet. Uh, that can be a precursor to uh, La Vigna if this area starts to cool down. So that's something I'll be looking for in the next few weeks. But overall, it looks as though we have got a little bit of a La Nina signature starting to appear, albeit it's not a very quick, it's not a rapid switch into uh, La Nina. And combined with that, we also have uh, quite a cold uh, uh, PDO signature 
as well. So we, we see an ongoing cold uh, PDO scenario. So we've got a very warm tropical, subtropical Atlantic. We're expecting the Caribbean and the Gulf to warm. And anyway, it's only about average there. We've got a developing La Nina signature and we've got a cold PDO put it all together and you would suspect that we are likely to have uh, really quite a big hurricane season this year will landing you de develop that's a big question so CFSB2 is forecasting that uh, we will be going into La Nina through the course of uh, this uh, summer. So the temperature lines here are on the side of the uh, chart. Uh, dates in monthly periods along the bottom. So at the moment, we're hovering around here, I think. So we're actually a little bit above average in the central portion. No, actually we're up here, I think. Uh, somewhere around there. So uh, we're actually a little bit above average and almost in the El Nino signature um, for uh, region 3.4, which is the central portion of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean. By July, though, uh, CFSB2 has us down here. Uh, that, is, uh, that is under the all-important uh, half a degree below average. So to get a La Nina officially, we've got to be either, or an El Nino is the same the other way, but the same but the other way. So to get a La Nina officially, we've got to be half a degree or more below average. El Nino has to be half a degree or more above average. So we're reaching a uh, La Nina temperature threshold there, uh, certainly by uh, July, if the CFS is correct. So remember back, uh, the black dash line sort of moves down into uh, moderate to borderline strong landing your territory when we get through uh, towards the last stages of the year. A while ago, the CFS was actually taking us down here um, to, like, super Ninja territory. It's backed off that, so it doesn't look like we're going to have, like, a record-breakingly strong landing your event, nor a very, very rapid flip into it. But it does look as though we are going to be moving steadily, not quickly, but steadily, into uh, landing your through the course of this summer. And other models are in agreement. So this is coming from Copernicus. So these are coming from Copernicus. So this is the ECM at WF forecast for region 3.4. So quite a bit of scatter, but I think the majority of the ensemble members are down here. So probably reaching like borderline landing landing your territory with the ECM. But the JMA is actually a little bit more bullish, but we're going to uh, landing your nearly all ensemble plume members, just a couple of uh, stragglers up here, but nearly all on ensemble blue members are going into uh, weak landing your territory there as we go in through the summer. Again, it's not a rapid flip, but certainly quite a solid uh, flip into uh, landing you. We've got the Met Office, UK Met, also going for a quite a quick flip actually into landing you. So uh, going negative rather more quickly, I think, with the uh, with the UK Met and stronger as well. So if we get a quicker flip, then it also is a stronger event seemingly forecast is correct so uh, the uk met is going for a moderate to possibly quite strong landing uh, event and certainly as we go through the summer into the autumn we are well and truly into landing your territory now the dwd doing something completely different as it often does and is keeping um keeping us uh actually our, our most on top blue members are on the positive side there so uh keeping either any so neutral on the warm side or maybe in weak el nino uh going <laughs> not at all sure uh about that but it does add a degree of uncertainty you now if you come back to see survey so temperature anomaly uh chart it's not a, it's not given from this that we go into learning because that is a very weak uh event so we are sort of um Guessing a little bit, but we are likely to go into landing. You're looking at the subsurface temperature anomalies. It does appear that we have got quite a bit of cold water at depth underneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean. And I think we are going to go into a uh, landing event as we go through uh, this summer and into the autumn. But the DWD there, the German model, does add uh, a degree of a caveat anyway. So uh, this is uh, from my good friend Shryan, actually. Shryan Bruin got this together. This is from our spreadsheet. So you know when we do winter updates, we have a spreadsheet every week where we keep an eye on ACE, accumulated cyclone energy, along with total tropical storms, hurricanes and major hurricanes, and then we have a classification. So uh, Atlantic hurricane seasons have four classifications. They could either be uh, below average, they could be average, they could be above average, or get a big season 
these um they can be hyperactive. But having a little bit of talk, I think, about adding a fifth category, um, like super hyper or something. But uh, they haven't done that um yet. Anyway, this is from uh so this is based on the spreadsheet that you saw win to update. I think so shrine uh for this, but with an added element which is Enso. So this is basically showing all of the hyperactive hurricane seasons that we have had since uh, 1850. And those seasons are 1878, 1886, 1887, 1893, 1926, 1932, 1933, 1950, 1955, 1961, 1964, 1969, 1995, notice the long gap from 1969 to 1995, that's during the cold uh, AMO period, of course, through the 70s and 80s. Um, no, after 1969, we have to wait until 1995 for our next hyperactive season when the Atlantic starts going into its warm AMO phase. I mean, since then, we've had 1996, 1998, 1999, 2003, 2004, 2005. Incredible run. 2010, 2017 and 2020. We haven't had a high practice season since 2020. And uh, so we have um, the uh, total tropical storms here. So 12, 12, 19. I'm going to go through them all. You can see them for yourself. 1933 had 20 total tropical storms. And more recently, we've had 2005. Uh, incredible, uh, uh, incredible season that was uh, with 28 total tropical storms. And we had 2020 with 30 total tropical storms um for hurricanes show 2005 had 15 hurricanes while 2020 had uh, 14 hurricanes and 2005 had seven majors and 2020 also had um seven majors there so uh you know if we go a little bit further back we can see that 1887 uh, had 19 uh, uh, tropical, uh, total tropical storms, 11 hurricanes, but only two major. So there are various ways that you can uh, come out with slightly less in terms of major hurricanes, but if you're having a high number of hurricanes and storms, you still come away with a high practice season. Now, what's interesting is just it, because we've got our ace number there, which is the total uh, accumulated cyclone energy. So each of these individual storms is given out their own uh, amount of accumulated energy. Remember what these storms are doing essentially is moving uh, heat and energy from a tropic to the polar region. So um, each individual storm gives out its own amount of energy and then through the season as a whole uh, you get uh, an, an accumulated number. So uh, we have that in that column. Now, what's interesting about this is how many of these high practice seasons are La Nina. So we have got a few here, but are either Enso neutral. Probably you will think of a cold side. So they're close to La Nina, but not being officially designated as such. So there's a few that are doing that. And there's a couple that are around Nino, uh, which is 1887, and also down here, 1969. And there's one that's a Madoki El Nino, which is 2004. Now, obviously, not till <laughs> Unless the DWD is right, we're very unlikely to be having an El Nino uh, during this uh, hurricane season through the summer and into the autumn. So, how many of these are La Nino? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of these uh, years that are high practice from 1850 to 2020 are uh, landing, which tells us that the landing has seemed to greatly increase the chance of a hyperactive hurricane season. So if we are indeed going to get this landing year going, as we think we probably will, then uh, we can, of course, hold on. <coughs> No, sorry, but we can, of course, expect if we get the landing you're going along with the warm tropical Atlantic, but a hyperactive hurricane season is likely. And so that is what we're going to be predicting. Um, probably comes as no surprise that we will be doing that. Obviously, this does depend on the landing year getting going. So I have thought we'd probably see the landing year a little bit stronger than it is right now. Nevertheless, I still think we are going to see the landing year taking off. So I've got the numbers here. It's the scores on the doors for our forecast. Now, uh, the gas worth is uh, um, Atlantic 2024 hurricane season forecast going for 18 to 23 
total tropical storms. Could be higher than that. Bear in mind we've got um, 2005 and also 2020, but it reached a higher threshold than that. However, I think maybe later on we might see a little bit of an early shutdown. So uh, just just a little bit of a hunch about that, but might limit the, the potential to go uh, spiraling off, you know, into the upper 20s or even reaching 30 total hurricanes. It's a possibility, baby. There's a margin of error within this forecast. So I'm going for 18 to 23 total tropical storms. I'm going for uh, 10 to 15 hurricanes. So I think you probably will have quite a high proportion of hurricanes for this uh, season, given, you know, the developing La Nina and also the um, the, uh, the the warm uh, tropical and subtropical anti that we've got again. And if, as far as um, total major hurricanes is concerned, going for 5 to 10 uh, total major hurricanes. So, so that's, you know, quite a margin, actually, for major hurricanes. And, you know, if you get five major hurricanes, it is quite a high number. Um, if you were to get 10 major hurricanes, then, then obviously that would reach a record-breaking level. There is no season, as we said, within that table that has reached 10 major hurricanes. The most we've seen is 2005 and 2020 with seven. However, I would not be overly surprised if we push out a little bit higher. Probably won't go as high as 10, but could we get to eight majors? We'll see. And as far as accumulated cyclone energy is concerned, as far as ACE is concerned, going for 180 to 220 in terms of ACE. So that's a pretty high uh, number. The highest number for ACE, I think, on the, the, uh, on the um, spreadsheet there is 2005 at 250. Probably won't get to that. Um, but I do think we might go over 200 for uh, accumulated cyclone energy. Uh, again, obviously, there's a margin of error for this, so it could be a little bit under some of these numbers, could be a little bit uh, above some, some of these numbers. I don't think we'll be above 10 major hurricanes, but, you know, in terms of the storms and uh, hurricanes, we might might be a little bit on either side and, and whatnot. So, uh, that's what we're predicting. We'll see how the forecast goes. Uh, it is the first one that we've ever done here on the channel, so uh, if, it, if it all falls apart, you know, then uh, then it is just a bit of fun. And obviously, I know people can be very, very seriously impacted by these storms in the Caribbean, in southern parts of America, like along the Gulf Coast, around Florida, up the eastern seaboard as well, around the Carolinas. Um, you know, those areas can have very, very significant severe impacts. And if you are in that area and you're watching this broadcast, then Bear in mind, this forecast is just for fun. Um, no, we are not, uh, you know, uh, an agency like the Met Office UK or NOAA, you know, Metro France, etc., etc., etc. We're not issuing official forecasts for your safety. Uh, so if you, uh, if you need forecasts, you know, you're in the... Uh, in the prime area uh, for these hurricanes and, and you need forecasts for your safety, then uh, the official Met agencies are always the place to go to to advise you on your safety. So, um, you know, NOAA, etc, 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 that is the place to go. Right, okay, so uh, that's the first ever 2024 Atlantic hurricane season, well, first ever Atlantic hurricane season for 2024 uh, forecast uh, uh, with release here. I hope you're with me on that. Um, if you enjoyed the forecast, please you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for Jim Matthews. So much, Shrian, for the uh, table there and for the information you'll be seeing. That, I'm sure, well, not that, but you'll be seeing that at the um, uh, ACE uh, spreadsheet where we do our winter update starting in September. Um, but thanks to Josh Ryan Bruin uh, for that. And, uh, yes, we'll end it there, Ben. So that is the gas of whether it's um, Atlantic hurricane season forecast for 2024. We shall see how it goes. As ever, when we release any sort of longish range forecast, we will be evaluating this at the end of the season. So when we get to about December... We'll do an evaluation and see how we did. If you have enjoyed the forecast, please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and make sure you sub to our channel. You'll be able to see more content very, very soon. For this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.